Hello guys, Melky here and I want to react to a, to a video here from FASB uh, that is a financial accounting standard board. I think this issue right here is pretty interesting. This is about software recognition. Um, the question is how are you supposed to recognize software? Uh, I mean to the extent of my understanding of course this is a, usually a, an accounting recognition issue. It's really uh, huge it's like an elephant i could probably only talk about the tail or the trunk anyway uh what you do you are you going to capitalize the software meaning recognize it as an asset or would you put it in an expense uh so up until this part i find it very interesting and i want to share uh, some of it to you guys identify so i'd say it's not a, a prevailing concept it's typically in subsequent measurement Okay. Other questions, Sue? So I, I was struggling a little bit with, um, uh, I guess it's C, which is the, I, I call it the past experience overlay. That's the way I've been referring to it in my own head. And and as I, I tried to think about this, and, and I was um, concerned a little bit about the operability because I could see a circumstance where it, it made sense to consider it in terms of one and two. Because like, for example, if you're identifying core capabilities, maybe it would help you to understand whether they have a history of abandonment, et cetera. But then I was... Okay, uh, so moving forward, I'm not going to uh, get into too much copyright issue. So I'm going to skip around until the part that I could understand and present to you. But up until this point, uh, they're, they're talking about um, how um, they're, they're kind of considering an op different options here um do you if if you like instantly recognize everything as expense um and then you got some revenue out of it that means some of it are capital right they're they're supposed to be capitalized oh shoot okay but uh that means some of it you is actually an asset and it is not really accurate if you recognize it as uh all of them as as, as an expense uh, but then again, if you want to recognize them as a capital, uh, what what would be the issue here? Because sometimes the software really um, moving forward really is not going to reg uh, generate any revenues. Um, and is it really like this is just come coming from me? Maybe it's an internal software for internal operation. Um, then then the value then it is kind of subjective in terms of. Where, whether it's a capital or an expense subjective to the CEO. <laughs> okay, let's moving on. Let's move on. Would in effect be applied to all of the required criterion. But then when I thought about having to audit the past experience to determine whether it would have an impact, it, it, it just struck some operability concerns in my mind that um, I'm not sure it would be as effective as what we might think it would be. Um, all right, guys. So what she's saying here is actually um, um, not actually, but I, to the extent of my understanding, uh, they wanted to they wanted to uh, recognize uh, software or not deciding to recognize software, but as an asset, but instead as an expense. Oh my God, the sound of generator, man. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it's nice to have a generator, I know, but um, it makes things... Anyway, um, um, uh, it is kind of... If you, if, you, if you think about it, guys, uh, in the past, there, there's, there are some failures uh, that had happened, um, which could, could, could it be used as a precedent to determine whether or not this particular project is going to fail or not? Um, and look, uh, it's, it's a, in my opinion, it's a matter of weight, okay? Um, it, it's pretty, yeah, she's right. Like, in, in terms of audit, um, is, is it, sometimes in the past, it's low stake, right? Uh, so, there, some people are committed, but not really committed. But now, probably, this software is crazy high stake, and they're going to finish this up, probably. Um, and it's kind of, uh, there, there are many different dimensions. It's kind of, yeah, she's right. 
Uh, she's right. Okay, next. Any other? A core capability. I had in my mind that a core capability could be something that survives when a project is abandoned at the same time. So I'm, I'm just trying to clarify my understanding of what we mean by a core capability. And I'm thinking of, for example, you know, biometric security. All right. Yes. So we are talking about core capability. Um, this is also interesting to me because now I understand that um, maybe you can break apart the different um, the different uh, cost in developing uh, a software because sometimes there there are like sub sub capability like for example um, you know it blinks it uh, when it not it gives you a notification or it's just uh, it just regular text without blinking. But in terms of biometric, like she said over here, um, like fingerprint is definitely a core capability. So if somehow uh, this, this uh, biometric identification software were to abandon fingerprint and only to include um, DNA recognition or uh, iris recognition without any fingerprint recognition, um, it's it's going to be it's going to be okay initially to recognize fingerprint as an asset, but then after that, if you were you were to abandon the fingerprint feature, then you would like uh, categorize it in a special kind of um, categorization. Uh, I think that or a special cost, but it's not really just as simple as costing it. But anyway, um, I think that's fair in my opinion. Like uh, it, but. If we could identify uh, what are the core capabilities that we wanted to develop, um, that could be a good case for an asset recognition. That, that is a good point again. So it doesn't, when we say abandon out of the, so we mean like out of the software project. So the company could still continue to develop it in like their next version of software, but it's more abandoned as part of this, like it's not going to be in this release. So yeah, it could be abandoned altogether or it could just be kind of, moved off to a future release. Okay, guys, now now what she's talking about uh, still in, a, in terms of core capabilities, that core capabilities probably were abandoned in this version, but still it's going to be, it, it's in the agenda of the next version. And I think this is also interesting because if you are developing a software which is a second version or a third version of an existing software that has already um, monetizable, uh, I think um, it's kind of a less of a debate whether or not you would capitalize this software or um, or would um, would expense would put it in put it in expense. But I just want to add something to it, which is the terms and privacy or the legal agreement uh, part of the software. Would there be changes in the legal agreement? If there were changes in the legal agreement. This is me personally. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't so hasty in putting it into an asset. It could be an expense because legal stuff really changes a lot. Really changes things a lot. So if the version one uh, were accepted by many, but then the version two, even though everything is improved, but still the same. But they have legal things inside that is very very. Not very, just different. Just a little bit of difference is actually a, a legal difference. Uh, that is just me. That is just me. I know that a lot of people would say significant difference. I mean, up to you. I don't like it. I don't like I want legal terms to be like set in stone. And if you change things up, you better make it simpler. And I mean, I, that's already subjective. Let's move on. Okay, I want to continue on, but... Um, I think it, it is lagging, my internet is lagging. Um, so far, from what I watch, they are kind of considering things like uh, past experiences and stuff, and do, they do kind of mention about stakes, uh, that they use the word commitment, uh, saying that uh, the, the current version probably has a different commitment than the previous version, or maybe in a different software, could be the reference as well. And what I'm trying to look forward, if my internet works here, is whether or not um, um, a different companies, for example, or 
um, publicly available information about the software development uh, could uh, could be a consideration or could could add into the recognition of a software. Let's say, for example, I'm an auditor and I review um, capital capitalization or the or the cost recognition of an of a software and i do have a history publicly available of uh, articles so journals. on commitment anyway uh i i had some of jim's similar concerns and be interesting on what we mean by commitment how committed is Very committed uh it's a criteria used today and people seem to get by right it doesn't it at least on internal use software. Yeah, and when I say so, that, I mean people buying ERP systems and customizing it. They may not have full budgetary commitment for everything, or it's got a limit to it, or it only goes out certain certain uh, distance, but they still feel they've met the committed and authorized criteria today. So I, I really think it comes down to what committed is. And to me... Com- interesting, guys. Interesting. So how, how, as an accountant, how do you define, as an auditor, for example... Uh, how do you define commitment, guys? Because sometimes you don't have a budget, but maybe these guys are really um, in a high stake. Like, do you remember the story of Final Fantasy? I think was it Final Fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy project, Final Fantasy Tactics project? Was it Final Fantasy? There's a Final Fantasy project that were a, that were kind of uh, not budgeted. Oh, the, the beginning of Final Fantasy, right? Uh, that it wasn't really budgeted because, but then after that it, it became a success. But the people in there were crazy commi- committed, crazy committed. Monetarily speaking, maybe not as high as um, the previous software or the bigger software in the company, but that, that project were, were crazy committed. Okay, next. And it may be just as simple as you're going to keep working on it until there's an affirmative decision not to, or something along those lines. That that introduces, um, and then we'd have to decide how that works with our exploratory and novel concept. All right, I'm going to. Skip, I like guys. Christine. Okay, no, oh, this is so annoying. I just wanted to skip, and it started to become like this again. So, um, what do I got so far? Uh, I think it's pretty interesting. I think uh, there's a person's point in here as something's being developed. In other words, there, there's guidance today, right, for buildings and so on that you can end up with an impairment even though it's not done. Uh, we could That's still something the board would consider even though we're referring to it as subsequent account. Yeah, subsequent measure would be anything after you initially capitalized, so that would include... Any dollar. Okay, cool. Uh, let's talk about subsequent measurement here. Subsequent measurement is, uh, like from my understanding, you would... You would use um, forecasting and present valuing, um, and you determine the interest rate for the present value in order to get into a number. Okay, and I, I just think this is so expensive to explain. Uh, it's not just about the complication, but probably this, um, the, the, the consequence of a mistake could also be a part of it. Uh, but I just want to tell you guys, so, so the, the, this value subsequent measurement is not exist yet. There's no one that actually acknowledges that this software, oh, 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 how much is this uh, feature? How much the worthiness of this solution? There's none of it yet. But you're kind of, a, you're kind of um, budgeting it or forecasting it. And as an auditor or as an accountant, how much value are you going to uh, put into the financial financial statement um, out of out of that forecasting? Now it is interesting in terms of the valuation of a software. Um, would you use like a subsequent measure subsequent measurement feature in order to make it easier or in order to make it clearer whether you should put it in a cost or you should put it in um, in an asset because. If you're, uh, if you concluded that there's going to be some values, or maybe there weren't going to be some values, or maybe different components of it would would be uh, uh, articulable, but some component components would be murky. Um, I mean, if you can get uh, the clearer part of it, maybe you can make something out of it. Um, 
so um, again this is a consideration as well in determining a standard um, to make to make accountants life easier right <laughs> to make people smarter and I appreciate the work of these guys over here to actually kind of uh, cram these thoughts up and yeah that is some accounting standards um, um, university or college stuff uh, or master degree or professor uh, PhD stuff right here um, let's see let's see if I could continue oh I like this guy's opinion let me let me just try to take some of it through these criteria and, and so Mr. if you took Jim that Kruka. criteria and it says management commitment which I know is not management authorization but I'm a little bit concerned perhaps that I could say well management I, I as management am only committed to continue to develop for the next two quarters I think it's going to take a year to complete. I'll evaluate at the end of two quarters where I'm at at that point in time. But I have a stated policy of no commitment to completion, just a commitment to the next stage. So with that, adopting that policy as management, would I always then get to expense all of my costs? Okay, right. So that I think that's pretty, pretty interesting right there. It is something uh, to be think about. It's just something to be think about. Okay, next. Uh, let's see. And it all together, or it could just be kind of moved off. To I had a couple of questions, unless somebody had anything else. Um, so, so on commitment, uh, I, I had some of Jim's similar concerns, and and, and I think it's it, it, it's going to be interesting on what we mean by commitment. How committed is committed? Uh, it's a criteria used today and people seem to get by, right? It doesn't, it, at least on internal use software, and when I say that, I mean people buying ERP systems and customizing it. They may not have full budgetary commitment for everything, or it's got a limit to it, or it's only... Okay, I'm thinking, I'm going to skip, guys. All right, guys, so this is nuts, guys. This is so annoying. Um, so maybe j I, I'm just going to wrap this up. Um, uh, and if it's going to turn on again, so uh, what do I think the solution is? How do how do you recognize a software? Um, whether would you capitalize a software or would you would you uh, put it as an expense? Honestly, they've covered a lot, and they've covered maybe uh, factors that I that I didn't think of yet. So what I've said is already what I've said. So maybe I'm going to make a continuation out of it if the internet works. Now it's, it's annoying because when I was trying to explain something, it, it stops working. And when I'm trying to uh, in a stop working mode, it starts working and it's just kind of uh, jitters out the, the video. So hopefully you guys get something out of it. If you guys have an opinion or special concerns that haven't been talked about here, um, you can please leave your comment in the comment section below because this video kind of turned off their comment as well. But if you want to check out the original video, that would be better. That would be much better. So I'm going to put the link in the description below and please check it out if you want. Goodbye.